Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to get right into the weekly reading for the sign of Aries. Now this weekly is going to be for November 10th to the 16th and we're going to get right into it, Aries, by pulling out your Romance Angels for the week. Now those of you who are new to my channel, thank you very much for stopping by today. Um, the weekly readings are put out every Saturday. They are premiered every Saturday. Maybe a little bit late today with the premieres, but nevertheless, we will crack on. Um, and um, I pull out three romance angel cards. Then we get into your animal spirits, and then we pull out the actual three card rider, uh, rider weight forecast for your week. Okay, traditional tarot forecast. So, Aries, let's see what this week may be like for you guys. All right, we have express your love. Go ahead and make that romantic gesture. We have free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. And we have retreat. Time to disconnect from the world. All right, guys. So three very kind of different energies in a way. Uh, they are compatible, however, right? Um, let's go ahead and get into your animal spirits. We won't really know what these romance angel messages really mean for you, Aries, until we get into your spread. Now, the animal spirits can come into our lives and form of energies that are becoming available to us to use to get over a particular situation or a path or stage in our life. They can indicate entering into different stages in our lives, or they can also indicate personality traits or characteristics of other people that we may or may not be encountering this week. All right, so... Just take what applies to you, what resonates with you, and uh, disregard the rest. First out, we have Scorpion, Fire Energy. All right. And we have more Fire Energy with the Fire Ant. Wow. Okay. And we have... Earth energy with the raccoon. All right, so let's go ahead and review your animal spirits, Aries. Scorpion individuals uh, generally um, will, they're very, very competitive, right? They're very passionate about things. They're very, very competitive, very fiery. The scorpion individual oftentimes has a lot of difficulty letting go. Um, they, with scorpion energy, uh, an individual who's resonating with this will oftentimes have feelings, unresolved feelings that they will allow to fester, right? Um, and become heated, right? Um, oftentimes scorpion individuals tend to isolation because they don't like to be around individuals who could possibly hurt their feelings. So oftentimes they re rely on sticking to the shadows. They tend to isolation. Um, so this comes in at a time when, uh, you, you should be really, um, coming clean about your feelings and being honest about how you feel so that these feelings do not fester. You may indeed be dealing with someone who is resonating with this kind of energy and they may be coming across to you as someone who is upset. You don't understand why again, it will be because they are sort of, um, you know, obsessing on a particular event that maybe you may have felt was finished and done with, uh, they're not done with it, right? They continue to be upset about it. They continue to feel burned in, in a way, right? These individuals are very, very career-minded. They're extremely, extremely ambitious, and they often have very little friends because of their sensitive nature. Now, the fire ant Animals also a a fire element, right? Uh, but fire ants are also are associated, which is out and out irritation and anger, right? Very easily, easily upset. Someone who's resonating fire energy, fire ant energy, um, very aggressive. This is also somebody who is. Um, compulsive about sticking to the letter of the law or sticking to the strict orders that they were given. Fire ants are a uh, part of a colony, right? Ant colonies. And so in a lot of ways, they are like, you know, nature's little soldiers, right? And so in this way, fire ant individuals oftentimes are very, very sort of, uh, very strict in that way. They're very regimented. They, they like to you know, they need to be almost told what to do or they need to have an, a very orderly plan of what they're supposed to do. And if anything goes against that, they become very irritated. 
Oftentimes, if you're dealing with somebody who is resonating with this energy, the best thing to do is to stay cool and calm because fire ants are so easily irritated and upset that oftentimes there's really not much you can do with them. And the best thing to do is really just to stay away, right? And let them sort of... Um, Deal with their anger and irritation on their own until they also cool down. Now, the raccoon is an earth element. Very, very beautiful card. Animal spirit. This animal spirit resonates with talent. Literally talent. Those who are extremely talented. Those who are able to literally take anything and make something out of it. Especially people who are talented with their hands. People who are either musicians who are able to play music with instruments or who may be woodworkers or something to do with their hands. They have they have a lot of ability. Also, the raccoon can oftentimes be very shy. And the raccoon also sticks to the shadows, but in a very different way than a scorpion. The scorpion likes to be isolated. Rather, the raccoon likes to watch from the shadows. He likes to observe. Uh, everything that's going on around him, and it's one of his beautiful, one of his greatest traits because it allows him to learn, um, and it allows him sort of to increase his abilities and his talent by watching others, by learning from others. But it, it's his shy and sort of, I want to say, uh, just shy, not embarrassed, but just shy, reserved sort of nature. Uh, oftentimes, raccoon individuals need a little prompting; they need a little encouragement. Uh, to be told that, look, you have talent and you really should be showing it to the world. Come out of the shadows a little bit. You know, don't stay there. Come out. Show us this beautiful gift that you have or share it. Don't be frightened. Don't be afraid of sort of letting the world see what you can do, right? All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get right into your uh, three-card spreads. We're going to pull out anywhere from four to eight three-card spreads for the week. And these forecasts are going to let you know what you may or may not be going through this week, Aries. Now, of course, these forecasts don't necessarily have anything to do with each other. They're separate, and they may or may not resonate for the same Aries. They may resonate for different Aries, right? So you may not, um, you know, not every, every three-card forecast coming out now may be for you. And maybe none are for you. It's all up to you. Um, but if it does resonate, I'm glad about that. And please let me know in the comments. All right, Aries. We're going to get right into your first forecast. Out the gate, we have Sun Energy, Nine of Cups, and Two of Cups. All right. So, Aries, we are talking right away. We're talking about... Uh, coming, of course, being out of the shadows, being in the sun, right? Coming right out. Sun talks about your day, having your day, right? Having your beautiful day, having reaffirmations coming in that you're doing the right thing. Um, all eyes are basically on you right now. I think um, things are beginning to sort of work in your favor in a lot of ways. The sun brings with it a lot of clarity oftentimes as well. Um, clarity, confidence, uh it can be associated with Leo energy sometimes as well. But more than anything, it's this feeling of things really turning your way, right? Things really suddenly become becoming uh, coming out in your favor, right? Uh, your life kind of working out the right way. And certainly uh, get you getting a lot of really positive attention and positive feedback. You come into this week... And you're met with this nine of cups, which is a wish fulfillment, right? You feel very happy and contented. And you have a two of cups is what you reach out, is what you uh, end off the week for. For some, some of you Aries, this week will be a week where um, I'm going to say you get your wish fulfilled for a connection with somebody with this two of cups. But it comes in after a period or after an event of clarity. It could be that there was a misunderstanding somewhere. And the sun brings in honesty, clarity, truthfulness, uh, laying your cards down on the table. It, it brings, it kind of clears away the darkness because, of course, the sun comes out after that energy of the moon where things have been kind of unsure. It may have been, you know, people may, you may have even had information that was kept from you or may have seemed as though you weren't getting the whole picture. Then the sun comes out and you get all this clarity. And so you get a wish fulfillment with somebody and it's a love connection. All right. Could be a re reconciliation for some of you, um, or it could be a brand new connection, but it may indeed be with somebody that uh, you didn't realize uh, you were going to have a connection with. 
more love, three of cups, celebration, six of swords, and a high priestess. So some of you start this week off right away with an with a party, a celebration, a coming together. Three of Cups talks about being with like-minded people, your tribe, your family, get-togethers, social get-togethers, family get-togethers, just being around people that are um, your people, right? That that are like-minded people, that are people that you resonate with, and really celebrating the bonding and the loyalty amongst that group. It's very nice indeed. Um, so there's a certain sense of loyalty, certainly, that you're entering the week with some of you. Um, and you're really met with a six of swords, which is interesting. I'm going to say some of you may indeed be coming together with someone and you may be moving in with that person. You guys may be moving together into a different place or traveling, right? Whatever the case may be, this union is very harmonious. And I'm going to say it's something that you knew was going to happen. Aries, some of you have had a little intuitive feeling about this for quite some time. Again, this could be very well, once again, a reconciliation, or it could be a coming together with you and someone else where both of you are really pulling each other out of a difficult situation and moving towards harmony. Um, but you're doing it with a lot of confidence. And the high priestess comes in just to let you know, I want to say that right now your intuition is running high and stay stick with your intuition, right? Because it's your intuitive sort of... Uh, it was an intuitive inkling in, that got you on this road in the first place, right? Somewhere along the line, you had an intuitive or you had your inner voice, your gut tell you to do something, and it's turned into this great connection and this kind of move towards harmony. I want to say for some of you, this is going to be an absolute move out of a situation of uh, difficulty. The world, eight of swords, Queen of Wands. So the world card talks about really being at the right place at the right time. Some of you, again, are feeling very much like things are happening in a very faded way. The world talks about things coming in like, you know, as if it was destined, right? You feel like every little move and every little action, every little event was something that was supposed to happen. You feel very confident about it. Not only that, you also be with the world card, you also begin to sort of accept a lot of the things you've gone through in your life, past sort of traumas and difficulties, um, because uh, you understand that all of those things were what you needed to get through to be right here, right now. And where you are right now is exactly where you want to be. So it's a really a, a feeling of uh, embracing everything that you've been through in life when the world card comes out. Excuse me, I have to take a sip of water. Now, Eight of Swords is what you're met with. And so right now, some of you are, you're met with a really toxic energy. Eight of Swords is... Um, is the gaslighter, the victimizer, the one who plays the victim card, the one who is so obstinate and so stubborn in their ways, in their communication. They're always right. You can't talk to this person. They're always right. They never have room for anybody else's opinion. They make people feel like shit when they're talking to them. And so what ends up happening, this eight of swords person almost invariably ends up alienated because of their actions. And then of course they blame the rest of the world for that too. So you're, you're met with this very toxic energy. I'm going to say this person is probably going to be trying to guilt trip you or make you feel bad about the fact that you're resonating so highly right now, that life is turning out so well for you. And this person comes right in. It's like, Oh God, like, well, what about me? You know, what about me? And I think they really try to turn you around or try to take really the sail, the wind out of your sails. Um, but you're not having it because you come in, um, round out the week with a queen of wands, which of course is very, uh, fiery, strong, fiery energy. And the queen of wands is the strongest queen in the deck for facing troubles, right? Facing troubles, also for facing people. She's not the queen to be messed with. She's not the queen who's gonna be thrown off her square. And she's certainly not the queen who's going to give in to this kind of toxic, narcissistic energy. She's pretty much the queen who will arrive in this situation and really tell you about yourself and send you packing, right? So in this way, you don't allow this sort of toxic, uh, gaslight or energy to get to you this week. And you really round off the week with a sense of authority and accomplishment in the sense that, uh, you really dispatch this person very quickly. You know, you just, you know, you, you, you're the queen Scorpio. And again, this is not gender specific, but even if you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. You're the queen of wands right now. And the queen of wands is one of the highest cards in the deck for really facing difficulties, obstacles, facing toxicity, 
The Queen of Wands is the one queen who can face this type of toxic individual and come out of it unscathed. Queen of uh, King of Pentacles, King of Cups, and the Ace of Swords, and that's going to be my last spread, guys. Two kings. Whew. That King of Cups is very Scorpionic energy as well. So for some of you, you are coming into the week with King of Pentacles. You're met with a King of Cups. I'm going to say this is either vice versa. Uh, you are coming into an agreement or a meeting with somebody who's very much your equal. King of Pentacles, of course, is the great businessman, the one who comes in and who really supports. Uh, he's the investor. He's the benefactor, right? He's the mentor in a lot of ways, certainly in physical ways, certainly in the way of career and business and things that we, enterprising things in that way. He's the uh, king of uh, abundance in a lot of ways, in the sense that abundance continues to come in for the king of pentacles, right? Um, and so this is the energy that you're coming into the week with, but you're met with the king of cups, which is an equally strong, fiery energy. Remember, kings are always fire. But here we have the king of earth, which is pentacles, and the king of water, which is uh, cups. So we have the fiery aspect of each of the suits. And so just in the same way that you are very fiery uh, Aries, right? Uh, but sometimes you resonate with other uh, aspects. This person that you're coming across this week, Aries, is very much sort of like scorpionic energy, very fiery as well, but fiery emotional, very fiery emotional. You guys come together, and I'm gonna say it's always a, it's a, it's a, almost a, like a meeting of the minds. This doesn't necessarily feel romantic. I'm gonna say this could be romantic, but it ends up with an Ace of Swords. So it's like this is very much a victory in terms of you two coming together. Again, I think it's gonna feel very much like this was a faded thing. This coming together of you and King of Cups, or if you are resonating vice versa, is very much a faded thing, and it feels like a victory for both of you because together this is a real power dynamic. Could certainly be a power dynamic with regard to anything creative or anything to do with work okay um this is almost like one of these partnerships you know biddle and ba bailey uh printing company is now you know a multi-billion dollar company because biddle and bailey met each other you know what i mean it's this kind of real strong connection mental strong mental connection right and the connection of a victory in a sense that you two coming together is going to be a very very powerful union all right guys this is your reading aries this is going to be for um November 10th to uh, the 16th. Let me just, there we go. Uh, and of course, if this resonated with you, please like, subscribe, and share. Leave me a comment in, uh, in the description box below. All right. But for right now, Aries, I'm going to say have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I shall see you next week. Bye-bye now.